Hey guys, let's talk about how to use the inset tool in Blender. So, just go into edit mode, select a face. The shortcut for this is I, and this is the fastest way to do it, so I'm just gonna tell you how to do it with that. So I will just simply grab your face, and it'll create another smaller face inside of it. Now, you'll have this drop down over here where you have some options. So boundary, what this does, is it just insets the face boundaries. If you uncheck it, it doesn't really do much. I never mess with it. Offset even, we'll try to offset everything evenly. So the same distance from each of the edges, which is really useful. I always keep that checked unless I'm doing something really specific for something else. Offset relative, what that does is it will inset based on the original face shape. So to demonstrate that, let's go ahead and add ourselves a rectangle. So I'll shift A, I'll add a cube, let's move it over a little bit, scale it on the X. I'll apply the scale, there we go. So we have our face, we inset without offset relative checked, it insets pretty evenly. But if we check this box, it will offset relative to the original face shape. So let's go ahead and uncheck even. And if we were to ch change the thickness, as you can see, it maintains the ratio of the surface area, or at least it tries to. And that's how you can use offset relative. Generally, I don't use it that much unless I'm doing, <clears throat> oh, I'm dying, unless I use something pretty specific. And I already mentioned this, but the thickness scale, you can go ahead and readjust this if you like. You can also adjust the depth. And what that does is it will give you some, you can still be like you grabbed it out and moved it along the normal axis. And that can be useful for some situations as well. Edge rail, I don't really mess with that. Inset the region along ed existing edges. It's basically what it already does. Checking and unchecking, it doesn't do anything. Um, I've never used it. Anyways, the next thing I recommend is outset. And let's go ahead and select a face over here. Let's inset. And then if we check this outset box, what that does is it insets it backwards. It will outset it. And let's go ahead and change the thickness so we can see a little better. As we can see, it's going out and going back to the normal one. The reason it's doing that is because we did it on the original inset. If we were to inset this one and then check outset, it will go outside of it, as we can see here shrink it and then go bigger and basically it just creates an edge loop around your face and select outer what that does is it'll select the outer faces once you finish your selection and or your inset instead of the inner one now for inset individual i'm going to show you this on a new cube or actually let's just use this one let's go ahead and control r this way and add a couple loop cuts press three if i select these three faces and press i with individual selected it does them individually but if i go ahead and check the individual box again it will do as one. This is sort of like when you're scaling objects and you scale them together versus on individual origins, the, the difference between this and median point. But yeah, that's how you can use individual. Now, something to note, outset will not work if you have individual selected. So if I inset this, let's say inset it again, and then let's check outset. As you can see, it works right there. We'll zoom in so you can see. Inset versus outset. And if I check individual, it will go back to inset. Why that happens, I don't know, but it does, and I thought you should know about it. Interpolate, again, this is something that I never check. If you look at the little box, it says it blends the face to data across the face, or across the inset, but I've never used it before, I just leave it checked because it works. Anyways, that's the basics of how you can inset stuff. Um, it's really useful for a lot of low poly workflows and stuff like that, and hard service workflows as well. But yeah, thanks for watching, I hope you learned how to to use the inset tool. See you in the next one.